everyone! Welcome back to Kidding Around. My name is Melanie Smith and I think it is thrilling that you are here with me today on another Thoughtful Thursday. Today we will be making these Rice Krispie treats in the shape of mountains for our teachers who truly do move mountains. Before we do that though, if you like what you're seeing here and want to follow along with all of Kidding Around's videos, please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Below each video, click the thumbs up. And also, if you really like what you're doing here, please share us with your friends. Thank you so much. All right, well let's move on and talk about our thoughtfulness for the day. So, you all have teachers, I know, and I am sure that they are amazing teachers. Think about everything that teachers do for you. They make sure that you're learning, they make sure that you're safe and cared for, and truly, I know those teachers love you. And while I'm sure that you say thank you to them a lot for all that they do for you, sometimes it's kind of fun to still be able to give someone an unexpected, little extra thank you. And I think that that is exactly what you are going to be able to make today to give to them. So you are going to get to make these fun Rice Krispie, or actually I should say Cocoa Krispies treats in the shape and in the, in the form of a mountain. And then you can put it in a nice little gift bag with a nice little tag and it says Teachers Move Mountains. Thank you for being an amazing teacher. And then you can sign your name. Don't you think this would be lovely to give to your teacher? I'm sure that she or he would so very much appreciate it. And knowing that you made it yourself makes it that much more special. All right, so in order to do this, you will need a few supplies. So for the ingredient list, you will need some Cocoa Krispies. <laughs> you will also need some nonstick spray. This is very important when you work with Rice Krispie treats. Uh, you will need some mini marshmallows. You'll need four cups of those. You will need some butter, three tablespoons of butter. Um, and then to make the snow and the grass, you will need some chocolate chips. So some white chocolate chips and then some green chocolate chips. These are a little bit harder to find. I found these because I was looking for mint chocolate chips. So my Rice Krispie treats are actually chocolate mint. Um, you can also find chocolate melts that are actually just white chocolate um, and they are colored green. Below this video, there's a link to some of those. All right, and then the equipment that you will need, you will need a stove burner. So obviously this is definitely something that you will have grown up supervision and permission to do. So a stove burner, you'll need a large pot and a large spoon. You will need a cutting board and you will also need a sharp knife, again, grown up supervision. You'll need a couple spoons to help you mix and stir. Uh, you will need a measuring cup, specifically the one cup measuring cup. You will need some parchment paper and you will need a 13 by nine ish pan. And then for the chocolate that we're going to melt and put on these, you will need a smaller pan that's filled with water. And then you will also need a heat proof bowl and another spoon. And then to make your, um, your actual presentation, you will need um, a cellophane bag. You can get these at craft stores. There's also a link below this video so that you can purchase those. And then you will need the tags, or you can use the tags. You can make your own. But if you want to use these tags, you can find a link below the video where uh, you can print these off. And there's also color and black and white, so you can print either one. Um, and then you will need some ribbon, or I'm using some twine to close the bag right there. And then you will need scissors and a hole punch. It sounds like a lot of stuff that you need, and sort of it is, but they're all things, or most of the things, are things that you'll probably have on hand, like all of this baking and cooking equipment. All right, well, should we go ahead and get started? Let's do that. All right, let's get that out of the way so you can see. 
And then, so the first thing we have to do is actually make the Rice Krispies treats. This is my uh, stove burner, so you would be using the stove burner probably on the top of your oven or in your kitchen. And what you are going to do at the beginning is you are going to cut uh, your butter. So you are going to measure it. That's the way of measuring it. It's really cool that uh, butter has these lines on it, these measurements on it. So you can simply find your three tablespoons. So you can see this uh, printing kind of goes off a little bit. So you kind of have to adjust for that. The printing is really supposed to be right on top of the butter stick. But this shows you that if you cut right here, you're at one tablespoon. If you cut right here, you're at two tablespoons. And then obviously the whole piece of butter is a half cup. You could measure a third of a cup. This is really cool. It makes it so easy to measure butter. All right, well, we need three tablespoons. So I'm going to go ahead and cut three tablespoons off. The rest of that butter I can just put back in the fridge for another, another baking excursion. And so I am going to put that in my pot that is on top of my burner. And I am going to turn this on to medium to low heat. All right, so then it's time for the marshmallows. So you will need four cups of mini marshmallows. So I'm going to move this out of the way. You know, I think I'm actually going to put it down here so I've got a little bit more room. I'll make sure that it stays safe there. All right, so four cups of mini marshmallows. So I am just going to scoop those up and dump those right in on top of my butter that's heating up. So that's two cups. And then we have a third cup here. And let's see, a fourth cup. There we go. All right, I'm going to put these aside too. Okay, and then you stir. Stir, stir, stir. You want to make sure that it doesn't burn. So you're going to be very careful because obviously this is very hot. And you are going to stir until it's completely melted. All right, so as you can see, it takes a little while to get started, but once it gets going, it goes pretty quickly. So you see there's still lumps there of marshmallows, so I'm going to keep stirring until those are mostly gone. And I am being very careful, making sure to keep my hands away from the hot parts. And we just keep going. And I think I am going to call that good. So once you have your marshmallow and your butter all melted together, then you are going to turn off your heat. Completely turn it off. And that is when you get to start preparing your pan and also putting in your Cocoa crispy treats. So I have my pan here that I will eventually be putting my finished Cocoa crispy treats in. And so I am going to spray it with some cooking spray before I go forward, you will find out that this is a very sticky recipe. So we use this cooking spray to kind of keep things from sticking that aren't supposed to stick. All right, well, once you have your pan ready, then you can take your six cups of Cocoa Krispie Treats, I know they're loud, <laughs> and put them in your marshmallow and butter mixture. All right, so there's two, let's see, and three, that was a little light, I'll remember that. So that was four, 
This one's a little bit over because of the fourth cup. So that was five cups and six. Nothing here has to be exact at all. It works well with the close to the right amounts. All right, so now, once you have your Rice Krispies in your marshmallow mixture, you are going to very carefully and very slowly mix it all together. So you want to be very deliberate about this because otherwise you will have Rice Krispie treats flying all over, or Rice Krispies, Cocoa Krispies, and you don't want that. So what I am doing here is I am digging my spoon down to the bottom of the pan to get that marshmallow mixture, and then I am kind of folding it over to bring that up so that all of these Cocoa Krispies are covered in marshmallows. Okay, and then once you think you have it pretty well mixed, you are now going to put it in your prepared pan. All right, so I am now, I think that's pretty good, I am now going to move this aside and then I will, being careful because this is heavy and hot, this is definitely where a grown-up can offer some assistance, I'm sure. But now I am going to dump all of this cocoa-y, marshmallow-y, buttery, gooey yumminess into our prepared pan. All right. And you're not going to be able to get every single last bit out of the pan. That's okay. Maybe once it cools down, those are good taste test bites. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to take one of these spoons that I mentioned, not the one that I used to stir um, in the in everything while it was hot, because that's pretty stuck, right? This has quite a bit of stuff on it. Now I'm going to take another spoon, spray the back of it with some cooking spray, and now I am going to try to start moving all of these Rice Krispies down into a, I don't know, would it be a loaf? Or, well, I'm just trying to flatten them. I'm also using this other spoon to help me scrape off all the stuff of my stirring spoon. All right, and if you're, uh, the spoon that you're using here, like this one, to push down all the Cocoa Krispies, if it gets sticky, go ahead and spray some more cooking spray on it. It just takes a little spray, but oh my goodness, it helps so much. All right, so I am just pushing all of this down. I'm trying to make it kind of an even level, uh, dessert, I guess. I don't know what to call this. It's not a loaf because bread is in loaves, but you know what I mean. I'm just trying to push it down so that everything's kind of even. It's all spread out there and it's looking pretty good. All right, so again, this doesn't have to be exact either. You're just going for roughly flat. Nothing's going to be perfectly level. All right, yeah, I just want to get over there. It feels like I'm a little light over there. Okay, so at this point, your Cocoa Krispie treats are made, but we need to wait for them to set up before we can cut them into our mountain shapes. So at this point, this is a great point to clean up your marshmallowy pan and all the stickiness, just some soap and water really will work well on that. And you can let this sit, I would let this sit at least 20 minutes as it firms up so that then you can actually cut it. So I'm going to do just what I said. I'm going to go clean up my mess and then I will meet you back here in about 20 minutes, though it will only feel like the blink of an eye to you. Um, but when I come back, this will be set and we will be ready to go on to our next step. All right, I'll see you soon. All right, we are back. Our Cocoa Krispies have set and they are now ready to be cut into mountain shapes and dipped in chocolate to be made into mountains. All right, so the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to take our sharp knife, so we're going to be very careful, and we are going to cut these Rice Krispie treats into triangles. So the best way to do that is cut them in half this long way. So I'm going to just make a cut here, and because they are set, they are a little bit hard to cut through. So definitely make sure to be careful and have a grown-up supervision and permission with you. 
All right, so now I have cut down the middle like that, and now I am going to cut each of these rectangles into triangles. So to do that, I just start here at the edge of the pan, and I go down to the other edge of the pan, and then I am going to do that same angle on the other side. So you can see right there now, I have cut this into a triangle. And then I am going to do an upside down triangle. So this is going to be the point of my triangle. Obviously over here, this was the point. But so I am going to do that same angle here, and I am going to cut, and now I have an upside down triangle. So you would just do this throughout the rest of the pan. I'm not going to do this for the whole pan because I don't want you to have to wait. But so what I am now going to do is pop out one of these triangles. And remember, everything sticks. So it'll take a little bit of finagling. And, but you, I mean, you will end up with a great triangle just like this. Okay, so now it is time to make the chocolate so that you can dip these into chocolate to put the snow on the top and the grass on the bottom. So to do that, we are going to use our own type of double boiler. And I have a pot here that is filled, or not filled with water, it has water in the bottom of it. And then I am going to put a heat safe bowl on top of this pot. So you can see that the bowl sits in the pot, it doesn't go to the bottom, right, you can see that. And the other thing that you should know is that the water should not touch the bottom of the bowl either. So the water needs to be below the bottom of the bowl. So I am now going to take my spoon out and I am going to turn on my burner. And I'm going to turn it on relatively high, pretty close to high. This now will allow us to melt chocolate in this top part of, or in this bowl, and it will keep it from, it will keep it from burning. When chocolate burns, it actually, um, well, I mean, it can get dark and, you know, brown, like you think of something being burned, but it also can get kind of clumpy, and then it's really, really hard to work with. Actually, it's pretty impossible to work with. So you don't want to do that, but you do need to know with this type of a setup, this bowl will now be hot because that water beneath it is going to boil and it is going to heat up everything around it. So make sure not to touch the bowl, even though it probably appears that it might be cool. Okay, so the first thing that we are going to do as this is heating up is we are going to um, open the chocolate chips because <laughs> that's always the first thing to do. And then I am going to put probably about half of this bag in there. Um, and you can always add more. It's better to go with less and add more than feel like you've kind of cut or bitten off more than you can chew. <laughs> All right, and then it's just going to heat up. It will take a little bit to heat up, but um, you can just kind of gently stir it. And once you see it start melting, then stir a little bit more. So I am just going to wait for this and then um, we'll be able to get started dipping in our Cocoa Krispie treats. Oh, you know what? While you're waiting for that to melt, this is actually a perfect time to go ahead and set out your parchment paper. Once you dip your Cocoa Krispies into the chocolate, you will need somewhere for them to dry. The chocolate will take a little bit to dry. Parchment paper is great for that because the chocolate won't stick and the Rice Krispie Treats won't stick to the parchment paper. So that way you can just lift them off once they're dry. So go ahead and make sure that that is close and then check on your chocolate chips. And we are still just waiting for them to even get started. So um, I'm going to go ahead and time lapse this and then we'll be talking as soon as they're ready to um, use for dipping. All right, it looks like we are very close. 
Uh, you can obviously see the steam escaping from underneath the double boiler. That's because that water is actually boiling underneath. So again, just a reminder, everything here is hot. All right, so I think I am going to call this pretty well melted. So I am going to turn off the, uh, the burner, but um, that doesn't mean that everything here is cool. In fact, everything here is still very, very hot. So I'm going to be aware of that. All right, but now I can take my uh, Rice Krispie Treat, my Cocoa Krispie Treat, and I am going to just coat on some of this white chocolate. With the help of a grown-up, it might even be better if you took this completely off of, took the bowl completely off of the pot. Because as that steam escapes, which it will continue doing, as you can see, you can still burn yourself on the steam. So if that's a concern, please ask a grown-up to help you move this bowl onto a heat-proof surface so that then you can start, you can hold your Rice Krispie Treat over it and put your, um, your chocolate on. All right, so you saw how I did that one, I hope. I'll show you again on the second one. I just kind of spooned over the chocolate, and I am just kind of spreading it around with my spoon. The chocolate is very hot. We want to be careful to only hold the Rice Krispie Treat. All right, so there we go. I think those look like snow-capped mountains, don't you think? All right, so now we are going to go ahead and put the green grass at the bottom of our mountains, just like that. So to do that, I am going to keep this white chocolate still in my bowl, and I can just add green to it. White and green will make a lighter green, but it will still be a great green for grass. So I am going to take not very much, oh, uh, well, I don't know. It depends on how many Rice Krispie treats you've made. I'm going to take, oh, a handful and a half and add that to the white. I can always add more if I don't like the green or if I feel like I need more to make my grass. And then I am going to go ahead and I will turn back on the burner so that the water boils and that I can melt my green chocolate chips or the green uh, candy melts that you have. Your chocolate may not be as hot as mine is because if you have made several of these mountains, you know that that took more time than just the two that I took. So this may be relatively cool. It may take a little bit longer for your green chocolate to start melting than mine is, but it just depends on, you know, how your workflow is going in your kitchen. As you can see, mine was still very warm. So my chocolate chips, my mint chocolate chips are melting very quickly and very easily. I'm just going to stir just a little bit more here and that looks pretty good, I think. Yeah, so now I'm going to completely turn this off and then I will start putting this green grass on my mountains. So now I'm going to very carefully pick up my mountains and I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the white chocolate, but I am going to do this on the bottom. You may want to wait for your white chocolate to set up a little bit more than I did. And of course, if you have more mountains that you're doing than I am, it will just naturally be more set than mine is. Um, you can kind of see the weight of the wet chocolate is pulling over, I think you can see that, is pulling over the top of the mountain. If you don't want that to happen, just wait a little bit longer before you start your green grass, before handling your Rice Krispie Treat. But you can also see when I put it back down, it straightened out and now the chocolate will dry together and it won't be a problem when the teacher picks it up. All right, so I'm going to do this one more time. And on my second mountain, you can see I'm just kind of scooping the chocolate or the mint chocolate on here. And I'm just, I'm trying to get the sides and the bottom just for completeness. And remember, you can move the bowl or you can ask a grown up for some help moving the bowl off of the steamy water. Um, and then if it starts to get hard, too hard to use, you can then ask for help to get the bowl back on the, the pot, turn the burner back on, and it will melt pretty quickly probably back to a consistency that you can use very well. Okay, so now you can see I've got my mountains, so now begins another waiting 
process. So I am going to wait for these to completely dry and then I will slip them in my bag and I'll show you or in the in the cellophane bag so, so that you can give them to your teachers. I'll show you how to do that in just a couple minutes um, once these are dry. Just a little hint, if you want these to dry faster, you can pop them into the freezer or the fridge for just a few minutes and then they will be solid and you'll be able to go a little bit quicker than if you just let them dry um, in the normal room temperature. They will dry room temperature, they'll just go a little faster in the freezer or fridge. All right, I'll see you back in just a few minutes. All right, I am back. Man, there's been a lot of going and coming and going and coming in this activity, right? This is definitely one that will help you practice your patience, don't you think? All right, well, we are at our final step now. So you are about to reap the rewards of your patience. So now I have my two, but you might have a lot more, but I have my two Rice crispy Cocoa crispy treats ready to go in a bag for a teacher. So I am just going to take this treat and gently slip it in to the cellophane bag that I have. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe that's easier said than done. All right, so the only trick about this is that you want to make sure that your chocolate is completely set before you do this. So I actually did take my two treats and put them in the freezer just to make sure that they were completely set. All right, now once I have that in the bag, I can simply tie it. I'm going to use this twine because I think it's just kind of a cute look. You can use ribbon, um, you can use, well, you could use cloth ribbon or curly ribbon, whatever you want. All right, so now I have the ribbon, I've pushed it under the back of the bag, and I am going to tie it shut. So I am going to close, or going to put through the end. Here, let me just show you there. All right, so I have an end, I have two ends really. I'm going to cross them, and then I am going to put one end through that circle under the cross that I just made. And then I am going to close this bag. Now, if you want it to close a specific way, it may, it may help to have a second set of hands with this. All right, so I'm going to pull tight, and then I am going to do that one more time. So I am crossing, and I am pulling through that end, and I am pulling tight, so that is double knotted. And then I am going to take one of the cards that I have printed off from below the link below this video, or if you made your own card, you can absolutely do that. But I am going to, I, for right now, I'm going to cut one from the, um, the link below this video, and I'm just going to cut it off like that. And then, of course, if I were actually giving this to a teacher, I would put my name on it right now. And then I am going to take my hole punch and punch a hole in the upper corner, and then I'm going to slide it on uh, one of the ends of my twine, or if you're using ribbon. And then I am going to tie a bow here. So I cross it just like I did before, and then I'm going to make a loop, and then I'm going to go around with the other end, and then I am going to pull through right there. That is definitely something that you can practice. If you don't know how to tie shoe, this is a shoe tie. If you don't know how to tie shoes, definitely just practice, practice, practice. You will get it. All right, and then I think I probably cut just a little too much twine, so I will cut those off just to, to even them out. And look at that. I have this really cool gift to give to my teacher who definitely moves mountains. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, learning about spreading kindness all over the world. I just love that you are such a kind-hearted person. I look forward to seeing you on Saturday where we have another fun lesson that you just don't want to miss. Until then though, thanks for joining me for this one. Thanks so much for kidding around with me. I will see you next time.